With this video, I will show how a progressive web app functions. The what and why I will leave to others to explain. If you Google the subject, you will find plenty of articles and videos that cover the subject. There are four main components to a successful PWA. Web Manifest Service Worker Application Shell Structure Transport Layer Security The Web App Manifest is a JSON file and is the component that gives the native app appearance. The manifest contains a full and short name, theme colors, display mode, starting URL, links to icons and their properties, and a splash screen. The easiest way to create a manifest is to use the online web app manifest generator. This can be found at app-manifest.firebaseapp.com The generator will also generate the different sized icons. This is handy to know when it comes to personalizing the icons supplied by the boilerplate. To apply these settings, we add a single link to the manifest in all web pages. In our single page app, we apply this to the index file. Dealing with Wayward Apple, we need to add support for iOS. A service worker is a script that your browser runs in the background, separate from a web page opening the door to features that don't need a web page or user interaction. To install the service worker, we kickstart the process by registering it in the page. This tells the browser where the service worker JavaScript file lives. This code checks to see if the Service Worker API is available. And if it is, the Service Worker at sw.js is registered once the page is loaded. The Service Worker script has three events. Install, Activate and Fetch. The install event waits for a successful opening of the static cache and assurance that the files listed as assets are cached. The activate event fires up when a change has been made to the service worker. In that case, we must change the version of the cache. This would mean that we could have multiple versions of the cache making it confusing for the browser. Here we make use of the activate event to trigger cache management where we delete all but the current version of the cache. The fetch event occurs every time a request is made to the server. If the cache has a matching response, the cached value will be returned saving a trip to the server. If a cached value is not available, the server return trip will be made and the value will be used in the app while simultaneously depositing the value in the dynamic cache for future fetches. If the app is offline and no cached value is available, the fallback document will be invoked notifying the user. So that we do not overload the dynamic cache file, I've limited the uh, cached entries to 15. 
Think of this as the frame of your PWA. It's comprised of the design elements that stay put no matter what part of the PWA you're accessing. Your browser remembers the app shell on repeat visits, allowing it to load instantly so that you are not left with a blank page. That is why our single page app is the ideal app shell approach. The index file is the shell and the partials are the contents. The transport layer security simply means the PWA is served over a secure connection, which happens when a site is served over HTTPS. This ensures maximum security for both user and site data. Without the TLS, the progressive app will not work. The exception is when the site is hosted on a local server. That is it for my condensed explanation of a progressive web app. In the next video, I will show you how to change the theme of your project, including replacing the navigation bar and the footer. Thank you for watching.